Hi there, my name is Emily Drow and I'm CTO at Evidently AI. At Evidently, we build open source tool to analyze and monitor machine learning models. Today, I'm going to show you how you can create a dashboard or a profile using Evidently from Jupyter Notebook. For doing this, of course, first of all, you need to install Evidently. You can perfectly do it by following the instructions from our GitHub page. If you use any virtual environment, like Python virtual Env or Conda, continue doing it, it's great. So I already opened uh, my Jupyter Notebook. I have Evidently installed, so we can start. Let's import a couple of libraries. We are going to use pandas to create a pandas data frame on top of our data, and we are going to load some data set from data sets of scikit-learn, so let's import it. We also are going to use a couple of things from Evidently, which is dashboard, of course, because we are going to build it, and a couple of tabs. Tabs is the parts of the dashboard which uh, have some information about the analysis results and visualizations. So we are going to build data drift and categorical target drift dashboard, so we need to import data drift tab and categorical target drift tab. And later on I'm going to demonstrate you how you can create a profile, because in some cases it's much more convenient to have your report in a JSON format. So let's import a profile and some profile sections. Again, data drift and categorical target drift. Here we are. And I'm going to import warnings and get rid of some unnecessary warnings. You can totally skip this step or do the same. We have all set it up, let's load our data. I'm going to use Iris datasets, so for doing this I load uh, Iris datasets from model datasets. So I have my object and let's create a pandas data frame. For doing this I use Iris data as a source data and as a column names I'm going to use feature names. So that's it. And we know that we also have information about the target, which is types of irises. Let's add this to our data frame. Let's call this column target and use target uh, from the iris. And let's see how our data frame looks like. For doing this, let's call command head. Here we are. That's the table where we have first four columns dedicated to feature values and the last fifth one is a target. We know that our target is actually categorical, but it's encoded with digits, which is perfectly okay, so let's keep it like this. Now we have our data frame, so we are ready to create a dashboard. For doing this, let's create an object called dashboard. We already imported it from Evidently, so we put it there. And let's create the structure of our dashboard. We have a tabs option there, which is the list of tabs which we are going to include in our dashboard. You can use single tab, you can use couple of tabs, you can use as many as you want. There I want to use the two tabs, data drift and categorical target drift, so I put it there as a list. Then for calculation we need to put some data into our dashboard and to compare our uh, data to create data drift and target drift analysis results, we need to have actually both data sets, current and reference, but we have only one there. So no problems, we can just split it into two parts. Let's, for example, use first 75 rows as a current, uh, I mean as a reference dataset, and all the rest as the current data. So in order to have two datasets to compare between each other. So we can basically do it with help of indexing of pandas. So let's put it right there. And you can see that we also have one more parameter, which is called column mapping. Here we have column mapping equal to none, and it's like this because we have frankly simple structure of our data frame. We have only four numerical features. Our target is called target, so evidently can parse the structure of this data automatically. Well, evidently expect the target is called target, the model's output is called predictions, and it parses uh, the types of our features by data types. So there we have only numerical features and we are okay with the results of automation parsing. In case you have more complicated data structure, for example, you have some categorical features encoded with numeric values, you might want to use a column mapping. It will help to specify the feature types, it will help to specify where evidently should look for your target and model's output, and in this case, evidently we will parse your data correctly and use the correct tests for each of your features. But we are not needed now, we can continue with column mapping equal to noun and let's create our dashboard. We 
have a lot of visualizations there, so it takes some time, but now it's ready and we are ready to print it out. For doing this, you can use command show and our report will be plotted right there in Jupyter Notebook. This is very convenient. Let's try. It's loading and here it is. You remember, we had two parts of our dashboard, which is data drift and target drift, and it's all there. First part is the data drift. We have a very nice interactive table, so we have a lot of information there, which is feature names, feature types, all numeric, visual representation of reference and current distribution. We can compare it just by looking at them, and the results of data drift detection. Drift is detected pretty everywhere. So let's open up a couple of the rows and see what we have inside. So we have plotted feature values there. Uh, the green part is the mean value for this feature from the reference dataset, and gray dots are the values of the features from the current dataset. So we have that it's pretty different. And we can compare distributions. We also can see that the distribution of this feature from reference dataset differ from the current distributions a lot. This is why drift is actually detected. So we can keep this row open and move to the second one, open it, analyze it, do some zoom in or zoom out. You can also save some pictures, for example, by downloading it as a picture and maybe it will be useful to put it in some slides or send it to someone, right? So we can close the rows, so perform any actions with the table you want. And let's move to the second part of our report, which is target analysis. Here I have target drift detected, because, well, we split the data in a way, uh, as in the reference data we have only zero and first class, and in current data we have first and the second class. This is why actually we have data drift detected everywhere. So there is the distribution, and later we have a pretty nice table where we have a lot of plots available. So we have information about the feature distribution for different classes, so we can compare it visually and analyze it. Again, it's very interactive, so we can perform a lot of actions there. Sometimes it's enough for the analysis because you want to come up with some conclusions of what is happening with your data and models, but often you want to share this information with your colleagues or even with some uh, non-technical uh, colleagues like managers who are not really willing to open it from Jupyter Notebook. For doing this, you can save the report as a separate file, HTML file. It can be easily done with help of save command. Just put the path to your file there, specify the file name, and create it by calling save command. Let's try to do this, and let's see how our report looks like. Here we have it. So this is the standalone HTML file, and you can see that the structure is frankly the same, right? So you can open up any rows and see that, well, we have all the same information available there. It's pretty convenient because you can just open such file in your browser, analyze it, uh, perform any zoom in or zoom out, save a couple of things as a picture, and get back to your job. But sometimes it's not super convenient to work with the HTML files, especially when you perform some monitoring and you just need to get the digits. For doing this, we have a profiles. To create a profile, one need just create the profile object instead of dashboard. So let's do it here. We already imported profiles, so that's time to use it. Let's specify the sections. It will be, again, data drift and categorical target drift profile sections. And we can reuse the same data and the same column mapping for profile calculations. That's very convenient. So let's run it. And let's see what profile actually is. For doing this, let's call JSON command and see that the profile is just a JSON representation of our HTML dashboard. So you have all the same information there, but presented as a JSON. So you have a name of your parts of the profile, you have information about feature names, target names, you have information about the drift detection, about feature types, and you have even information about the distributions encoded by digits. So if you want to visualize it somewhere else or put the information about drifts, p-values, uh, to other platforms, just create a profile and import it. So that's all I wanted to share with you today. I hope you guys enjoy. If you like the tool, feel free to come to our GitHub page, install the library and see more examples.